Oh, let us read John 2, 23 to 25. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. And needed no one to bear witness about man, for he himself knew what was in man. Well, let's bless each other. And bless him one more time. Amen. Don't mess really up with me right now. Because I'm going to listen to the message. Don't mess up with me right I'm serious now. more than you think. Because I'm going to listen to the I went the to the message. restaurant last Monday. And um, my family, think. we all went. And this waitress I went to the uh, wasn't, she wasn't treating us and, well. Um, she, I could see went. she's already and very irritated. Waitress, and the then, wasn't, you know, she like, she, 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 well. when she brought food, she would, like, we were taking some time to take food, out, like, to our hands. But she, she was, like, because we were slow, she, she get more annoyed. And she's, like, I'm going to drop the food here. And then I'm, like, so I asked her, what? What did you say? And she was still being very rude entire time. So entire time, I thought, I'm not tipping you at all. You're not going to get the tip. And then, of course, that's what I did. <laughs> I didn't give her 20%. I gave her, I think, 10% or 13%. Well, I kind of wanted not giving, leaving her any tips. But I left her at least 10%. So I think I'm getting better, better than before. If I were to before in the past, I would just leave the place or run away. But I have, I had kids with me. <laughs> I have, my mom was there. So at least, you know, write something to leave her a tip. And I was thinking, why was I so mad? You know, I could have thought this way. Maybe this lady is having a bad time or bad day today. What if I'm leaving her 20% tip, maybe more than that? And leaving her one uh, piece, of, uh, uh, leaving her a letter? Are you having a bad day? Let me pray for you and leave her evangelism material. Isn't that much better than me just leaving, leaving her 10% and thinking that, oh, I won. Right? And why did I, why was, why did I react to her only that way? And I, I came to think, maybe it's because... I'm imprinted with the wrong thing. I have read articles. Some are looking down on Asians. I have, I have heard the news. There are racism. So as soon as I went into the restaurant, I didn't come into the restaurant as an evangelist, but I came into the restaurant uh, as an Asian who might face racism. So when she acted that way, that triggered my imprint. So I reacted to her wrong way. Um, why? And after I went through this, I went to the Word, meditate on the message. That's when I realized, oh, I didn't. I personally didn't really face racism that much, but I realized what I have read, what I have heard and seen have been my imprint. I heard many times how Asians, uh, people look down on Asians. So that became my imprint because I'm Asian and I am expecting that might be done. Although that wasn't my first experience before, but I'm always expecting there could be things like that done. And then I am entering into the restaurant as a fighter. I'm ready to fight or as a victim. Of racism. Imprint. What is your imprint? And after experiencing, went through that incident, uh, reading the message, purple message, the temple got once, and it talks about removing the oxen, pigeon, sheep, and the money changers. And this is what I really, he wants to remove those unnecessary imprints that have been deep inside. And he's letting me realize. He's, he's making me into the temple he wants. I re that's when I realized this is why I went through this. Not only that, 
Monday, uh, Wednesday, I went to UIC for evangelism camp and um, having a Bible study. That day, the temple of God, our purpose message and prayer journal was about uh, sharing the gospel to multi ethnics. That you bring the gospel to the multi ethnics. And we and I and Jagan, we went out to evangelism camp and we met this lady, this girl. We asked her, hey, do you want to hear the gospel? And she was very open to us. And she's like, yes, I want to. I'm very spiritual being. So I'm like, oh, okay. So can, usually when you go out to evangelism camp, they reject you. So, you know, like, we've been rejected so many times. So when she was so open to us, I was like, man, why is she open? I thought she was going to reject. So we started, to, before sharing gospel, I asked her, do you have a particular religion? And she said, she's a Muslim. I was again shocked. I told her, we're Christian. We're about to share the gospel, which is Christianity. Are you open to hear Christianity when you're Muslim? And she's like, yes. And I asked her, do you not practice? And she said, she does practice Muslim. So, and I'm like, do you want to hear? And she said, yes. So she accepted Christ. And I asked her, do you want to hear this more? And she was like, yes. And she asked, so we gave her, Jagan gave her his number. So we're waiting for her, her phone call. She was short. Um, she was limping. So we could see she's physically ill. And everyone can notice that. And so in a sense, we thought she really needed the gospel. And she accepted Christ, although she was Muslim. The next girl that we bump into, totally different from this girl. This girl is tall, pretty. Well, no one's pretty other than my wife, but she's okay <laughs> and tall, um, nice. So we asked her, do you want to hear the gospel? She said, yes. So, you know, we were not rejected. So we were again shocked. Oh, my God, what, what's, what's happening today? And then uh, we, came, we asked her, do you have a particular religion? She said she's Muslim. So I'm like, can we share gospel? And she's like, yes. Do you want to hear this? Yes. And later we asked her, do you want to accept Jesus Christ into your heart? She's like, oh, no, because I can't really give my time for church or whatever. So we were like, no, we're not asking you to do something. We're asking you to become a child of God. Would you like to pray with us? And she's like, yes, I want to. And she's like, would you pray for me? Because I don't know how to pray. So I'm like, I will pray. You can repeat after me. She accepted Christ. And I asked her, do you want to meet more? Do you want to listen to this more later? And she's like, oh, I don't have time. But uh, we told her, but I can't, we can always pray for you if you need. So reach out to us. And she's like, okay, let me give you my number. So Jagan got two girls' number. Famous guy. And then <laughs> Muslim. And then I realized my prejudice you know, we have this, my prejudice about Muslim is that they do not need the gospel because they're Muslim. Although we talk about how Christ is needed for every single mankind, for a long time, maybe Muslim do not need the gospel, does not need the gospel, and they might not accept the gospel. Although we know a Tinu, who used, she, she used to be a Muslim, She's a Christian coming to our church, attending church, serving our church. Although we have seen the witness, but we are still falling into our own prejudice. Muslim might not need the gospel. Buddhist might not need the gospel. Or this color might not need the gospel. This height might not need the gospel. This weight might not need the gospel. This like school might not need the gospel. This school must, must be in the need of the gospel. We have those kind of prejudice. And I realize he's cleansing my temple. His temple. He's cleansing all the prejudice and all those unnecessary thoughts that's been imprinted in me through my experience, what I see, what I hear. He wants to clean all that. He wants us to be the temple he wants. Remnants, the message you're listening to, the word you're listening to, why would you dedicate an hour here at the church if you're not considering important? Um, that last Muslim woman that I asked, um, met, she said, oh, it was a good time to hear this. And I asked her, 
What do you mean it was a good time? And she said, because I'm going through difficulties. And I realized that's so true. Even Muslim, they go through difficulties. Every mankind, they go through difficulties. You're handsome, ugly, whatever. You are going through difficulties. You need a gospel. That's what he showed me. And that's what he let me experience in my walk of faith in my everyday life. Your God who's living in you will come to real to your eyes. When we're holding on to the word of God, it's living and it's active. So is this word really living standard for our lives? Is this really the word healing me, guiding me? Or is this really the rule of my life? Or are we just wasting our time here and just wish that this time goes fast? Remnants, a person, a human, needs God. And that God comes to us through Jesus Christ. And when we accepted Christ, we become children of God. And this is our privilege. That this highest being, people say they don't even know who this being is. This highest being claim himself, I'm your father. That this greatest being is speaking to you, talking to you. And he's not hiding what is about to do through your life. That's how much we're privileged. It's not that I'm wasting time at church. It's not that I am bound to the church setting because my family are Christians. It is that I am privileged that I'm called to call to the church to listen to God. So bless each other. Don't waste your time right now. Bless one more time. Listen. Listen. Write it down. And don't mess up with me. <laughs> Just how I share. What you see becomes your, your imprint. I have read some articles about racism. It's that I just read things. These things happening to Asians, that became my imprint. That could be my case. And I frame myself as an Asian, not as a child of God. Right? We're living like that. What you hear is your imprint. I'm not saying what you listen to because you hear more than what you listen to. You hear all kinds of sounds around you. And this might become your imprint. And there might be wrong imprint. And what you have experienced become your imprint. Imprint is your prejudice. Imprint is your thought. Imprint is your mind. Imprint is your heart. Imprint becomes your life. And it becomes your lifestyle. What do you see, remnant? What do you hear, remnants? What have you experienced? If it's not solely from the word of God, it's from something else that everyone is in the need of fundamental healing. It's not that they're unhappy because they don't have enough money. It's because fundamentally they have been depraved. They are corrupted. What the Bible tells us about humanity, Bible tells us that this being called Satan is in control of your life. He is murdered from the beginning. 
and he lies, and that's his own. Lies not from someone else's. He speaks his own, which is lie, and he murders. Steals your life, kill your life, and destroys your life. That's what he does. And we are sinner because of the original sin. And because you're a sinner, you are actually damaging people around you more than you think. For last week, I've been proving people how much you're a sinner. How you're sinners, you cannot be righteous because there's correlation in your life, edge pack of all your life. Daniel played soccer, Sam played soccer. They were in the same team. And Daniel looked at Sam so fast. And Daniel was so disappointed himself. He's not fast enough. And then after that game, he went home. He committed suicide. Whose fault is that? Sam. Because Sam's fast, Daniel is cursed. People look at you without through the eyes of the gospel. They will compare themselves to you. And that can bring disaster to them. And if you are the one giving curse to someone, it returns to you no matter what. And by the fact that because, by the fact that we're born as a sinner because of original sin, your presence itself is a damage to this earth. Damage to everyone around you. All your relationship. Every people around you, you are damaging them. Well, you're saying, I'm not doing bad things. Doesn't matter. Your presence is already cursing someone. That's the fact of the sin and curse. You, you cannot say you're righteous because you think you're not damaging people. Well, you are damaging people more than you think. It's simply that you don't know how you have damaged their life. Josiah told you many times, his presence is cursed to me. Why? I thought I'm handsome until I see that face. I see that face and I look at the mirror. I realize my God fell asleep during he was forming my face. Maybe he said he was so good after creating Josiah. And he looked at me he was like, man, I'm sorry, Johan. His presence bring me curse. So what does Josiah need to do in order for him not to damage me? He needs to be removed from this church. So he got to kill himself. So your life, no matter how it looks like, you, you might say, I've done all things for me. For you, you've done all things so that you might damage and hurt others. So many years, so many times. Even your relationships. Have you, have you, ever, have you ever been to... Um, Six Flags or on a special day, like Valentine's Day. Have you ever been to a city to have a date? Valentine's Day, being alone without any couples, being alone at the city by yourself. What do you feel like? On Christmas Eve, you don't have anyone next to you and you're just playing game. What do you feel like? All of a sudden, because Sang and Boyong, such a good, beautiful couple, man, look at me. Where's my girlfriend like Boyong? Where's my boyfriend like Sang? Man, I don't want to come to church. And I can come to Sang and Boyong. Guys, you are at the church. Don't sit together. Separate. Somebody's discouraged. We hurt each other. And you're just frowning face. That can hurt others as well. Juan. When he comes to church, he sleeps a lot. And you guys know, if you can find him, he's somewhere he's sleeping. You can look at him, and you can compare yourself. Oh, my God. I'm working here, dishing washes 24-7, and this guy's just sleeping? Man, this is unfair. I'm not going to come to church. All Juan did, sleeping well. And you receive scars from that. You're comparing yourself. And that comparison comes from others. And you yourself could be a standard of comparison to others. 
reason I'm telling you is because more than you think, you are very cursed. Because you're cursing every mankind. Original sin. That's the correlation. Everyone's damaging each other. We say we love each other. We say we help each other. Well, if God does not come and help, if it's not through Christ, you're not helping. You're not loving. iPhone for our convenience. And it actually developed called phone addiction. Everyone's suffering. This Steve Jobs plan intended to destroy all future generations. Or he just did whatever he believes is the best thing in his life. Bill Gates developed a computer. His dream was having every mankind having one computer at home. Did he realize or did he know everyone will become soon a game addict? Drugs and all that. Whether you are intended good or not, you are destroying and hurting others. Why? Original sin. We are born sinner, born corrupted. Born depraved. We cannot be good to any others. Sometimes I see my kids and my wife, they are hurting me. When I see my wife and my kids, they look so good. My kids, although they look like me, they're cute. But when I'm taking pictures together, I don't know, maybe I'm comparing too much myself about regarding appearance. It's been my scar. When we take Pictures all together, sometimes I don't want to take picture. Why? Because those three are very young. When I see myself, I'm like, I look too old. And I'm comparing myself. That's how low my self-esteem is. So sometimes I don't want to even take pictures with my family. So you can say, what did they do wrong? They didn't do anything wrong. But... Because I'm born original sin, I'm, my thoughts is already cursed. And Satan's deceiving me through that. And he's destroying me, making me feeling that I got to depart from my family, especially when I'm taking picture. I'm living with this kind of thoughts. Without the word of God, I'm sure I'm already in the mental hospital. Don't act like you're normal. Right? You could just have frowning face and somebody looking, looking at Christy, she's frowning face. And then you, Christy can misunderstand, oh, it's because I'm not singing well. But all they did is because they were about to fart, they were, they were holding it. And Christy thought, oh, maybe it's not me singing well. I shouldn't be on the stage. Can you know she thinks that way or not? There's no way you can ever know. But what? Your frowning face? Destroying Christy. Many times you don't know how you're hurting others. And the fact, even unbelievers, think about that. If you know how you're hurting people, do you think you can survive? You realize the guy you played four nights yesterday night committed suicide. And that game ID... That you killed him yesterday and he really killed himself. If you realize all this correlation has been revealed to you, do you think you can survive? Do you think you'll be okay? Even unbelievers are living under the grace of God. Child of God, without the grace of God, it's absolutely impossible that we can't live for him. It's impossible. That's the cause of the original sin. How Satan deceived mankind falling into original sin. And they are cursed because they are fundamentally cursed because they are separated from God. If you don't know how to take care of yourself, you don't know how to take care of others. If you are cursed, separate from God, you don't care about others. So even parents and many people around you. They sound, they care about you. But well, think about that. Think about this. Your brain is already depraved. It's wicked. It's corrupted. How can you think of others' well-being? How can you think of saving other soul? I know you sound like it, act like it, but don't fake. I know it's all for yourself. Isn't it? 
Let's be truthful to ourselves. It's all about you. Our brain is depraved. We cannot think good because good has been gone from our life. From evil, born from evil, learn from evil, and do what is evil. That's what it means, a child of Satan. And what happened to our soul? Our soul had been depraved. It's dead. And what happened to our life? Our life is depraved. This is the original state of mankind. So do not say this person needs, needs to go to college or needs to have a tutor for grace. Do not say this person needs more money or do not say this person needs something else. Because what they need, they need healing fundamentally. Without God, without being saved from this curse, there's no way we can ever earn happiness. And it is wrong to say you earn happiness when you don't even know what the meaning of happiness is. Happiness is only defined in the Bible. God is my happiness. Near God is my blessing. Near Him is everything. He is the source of all. So without God, do not expect Paul is super happy because he won soccer game yesterday. Or do not misunderstand Daniel must be depressed because he lost soccer game yesterday. The reason is they are fundamentally away from God, cursed, and they're under Satan. Remnants, there's no one who can tell this fact to people around you other than you. I know we've been, we've been talked about this thousand times. The reason I'm talking about this one more time and maybe tomorrow as well is because this needs to be imprinted in us. We got to now look at people with our spiritual eyes. What is the answer to the fundamental problems that we all born with? What is the answer to your friend? What is the answer of person sitting next to you? What is the answer who, who are saying they're going through difficulties? What is the answer who are depressed? What is the answer who are suffering from um, hallucination? Who are suffering from seizure lock? What is the answer that they're addicted to the game and drugs? What is the answer living under the fear of uncertainty? What is the answer to anxiety or panic attack? What is the answer to fear? What is the answer? What is the answer to what people are going through? What does Bible tell us? The answer is Christ's remnants. Has never been changed. It's been only one he gave us, and it's been only one that's been the answer to our lives. Christ is the answer. Can you bless each other? Christ is the answer. Bless them one more time. Christ is the answer. John chapter 1, 12, when you accept him, receive him in your heart, it says you are a child of God. I met this girl, uh, she identified herself as as, uh, as sexual. She was 13. So I asked her, what is asexual? And she said, it's that she doesn't have any interest to female or male. She said she's asexual. That was her image. That was her identity. That was her gender. I changed her gender. I asked her to focus on different gender than what you identify yourself. I asked her to remember you are a child of God. That's our identity. Are you gay? You are a child of God. That's first thing that we focus. Are you lesbians? You are a child. You know, 
Google it. How many genders we have? There is 107 genders. People are saying gender is something you, it's, a, it's simply, a, now they change the definition of gender. It's not by genetic. They're saying you identify your gender the way you want to express. So there is 107 gender. Then let us identify ourselves biblically. Then what will be our gender? Before I'm a male, before I'm a female, before Nathan like transgender, who are we? Before I'm a game addict, before I'm a professional in something, who are we? We are a child of God. That girl, a sexual girl, 13 years old, she's now 17. She went homecoming with the boys now. Healed. Right? She wore a dress like a girl. Healed. A child of God. Let them focus fundamentally. Don't do ministry. Many times we misunderstand having a Bible study or tarapa ministry is about Daniel making him gain, getting all A's. That's not about what we do. It's not about we make Sam to go to professional soccer player. It's not that. Our goal is that we bring fundamental healing. We help them to become a child of God. They, we help them to wear clothes with Christ. That's what we do. We bring fundamental healing to those who are sick and need. When you accept this Christ, you are a child of God. Bible tells us, Romans 8, 15. It says, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you have, you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. No longer slave to fear. There is people are saying, one of the reasons you guys are procrastinating is not because you're lazy. It's because you're afraid that you're not able to do it well. And they're saying that's why you're pushing it to the last minute and you do it at the end. We no longer are slave to fear of failing because we have been set free from sin and death. Christ is amazing and he's able. And that Christ is with us and Genesis chapter 2, 7, he is breathing in, into our nostril the breath of the life. Now, you don't need any breath from someone or something. Our breath is coming from God alone. This is what it means by being a child of God. Remnants, do not misunderstand. Having phone three hours, enjoying on shorts for four hours, it looks like you're using it for one minute, watching one minute for 40 minutes. Uh, 40 times, that's already 40 minutes. If you're watching one minute clip for 400 mi times, that's 400 minutes. And science has proved that more and more you do phone, using phone, on the phone will give you more stress. What I'm telling you is this. Many times we believe when I'm bored, I need phone. When I have nothing to do, I'll be on my phone. I believe phone is my God. But let me tell you, remnants, your breath is coming from God. Would you talk to God rather than talk to phone? Would you talk to God? Would you enjoy God rather than enjoy your phone? Would you enjoy Christ, the answer, instead of being on the phone, find your answer for your life? Because you can find your answer phone, you're stressed more. What is the fundamental answer, the breadth of your life? It's Christ. It has always been only Christ. So accepting Christ means we've been restored the breath of life. Accepting Christ also means we are the image of God. Image of God. Image of God means we are in the image of Christ like. Christ is the image of God. That means when we are the image of God, Satan cannot destroy us. Amen. This is why we're bold. This is why we're courageous. Because we know we will not perish because God is with us. 
This is why we're not scared of our uncertainty because we know and we believe God cares about us and He knows my future. Because my faith is rooted in God, we no longer slave to fear on uncertainty. Remnants, if you want to do, go ahead, do it. I'm not just telling you, go kill someone. What I'm telling you is, we no longer to slave of failure. Do not fear to fail. God is with us. Amen. That is the image of God. This Christ who has overcome Satan's sin and death. Is with us. Why do we give all in to God? Because we know Christ has overcome the world. It's not by forcing myself. It's because we believe and we know, we heard, we see Christ has overcome the world. This Christ is in you. Amen. So can you bless a person next to you? Christ is in you. And bless one more time. Don't mess up with me. Christ is in you. If they mess up with you, they will fail. Christ is on your side. Did you know that? Christ is on your side. What if both of us are children of God? Good. He's on your side. Who's going to win? Whoever God wants to win. So Christ is. Is on your side always. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. God told us nothing, nor angels, nor the great things, nor the future. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. That's in Christ Jesus. What has been restored? Blessing of Garden of Eden has been restored. We are here to subdue and conquer and enjoy the true blessing of the worship. Finally, you know one of the biggest problems of all mankind of nowadays? They cannot communicate. You don't see their intention and you misunderstand that. You don't see that. And that's because we are blinded. In the garden, what Adam and Eve lost, they could not communicate to each other. They lost the communication to God. That's what will be restored in the garden of Eden. When God is with us, we can finally, we can communicate. When you can communicate to God, finally, you can communicate to people around you. Why do you feel disconnected from your parents or your siblings? Because they are disconnected and you are disconnected from God. But if either one of you is connected to God, you can communicate a person next to you. God has restored that blessing. So this is my plan. When my kids grow up, I'm going to take up all the door of their room. We will leave doorless life. My bathroom will have no door. And maybe one day I will invite you to my house to sleep over. Open house. Open life. Amen? No? <laughs> well, I'm not telling you to do what I'm going to do. But I told my kids, you will have your room, but without the door. And he might have, how about your room? I will not have my door as well. Remnants, communicate. <laughs> it's very important. Today, if you go home, don't close your door. Amen? What do you do that you have to close your door? Right? Rest restoration of the blessing of Garden of Eden. You can communicate with God, which is restoration of the worship. You can communicate with people, restoration of evangelism. That will be restored. That means... I am a child of God. And when you are a child of God, this is what the Bible tells us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17, it says, we are a new creation. The old has gone, new has come. Who are you? 
can you change that? Can you not identify? I realized Michael. Did you guys know Michael is Asian? He believes he's Asian. I think he's Asian. And now that I believe he's Asian, but more than that, what do we need to believe? Michael is a child of God. We are a new creation. You know what we've been through for a long time? That's been the wrong identity of ourselves. Have you ever thought you are the remnant not doing the prayers on her? Remove that. I am the remnant never writing the message. Remove that. Ignore that. I am the remnant who will never pray. Remove that. I am the remnant not receiving the grace. Remove that thought. When I'm listening to the message, it doesn't touch me. Remove that thought. Disrespect all the wrong thoughts and respect the word of God alone. Remove those unnecessary thoughts. Well, Sam's not going to listen to the message. Remove that thought. Approach him. Share the gospel. He might be ready today. Remove all the wrong identity of yourself. Remove all the identity the world has brought to you. You are new. The old has gone. Indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Who's living in us? Paul, who's living in you? Amen. David, who's living in you? That's right. Guidance of the Holy Spirit. Nathan, who's guiding you? Amen. Benjamin, who's guiding you? Amen. Feeling of the Holy Spirit. Timothy, who's filling you with? Amen. Let's change our identity. Having a new frame of ourself. Child of God. Spirit indwells in you. Guides you. He fills you with His Spirit. His power. And you will be the witness to the end of the earth. And this is a mystery to the child of God. Let's look at, if you can, open Genesis chapter 18, 17. We will look at some Bible verses. You are a child of God. The main figure for the word evangelization. Genesis chapter 18, 17. If you're on the page, if you're about to be on the page, I'll give you 10 more seconds. Are we on the same page? Not yet? Okay, let's, are we? All right. Let's read it in one voice. The Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham? What I am about to do. Can you put your name on this? So can we read? Put your name. Okay. Let's read one more time. The Lord said. Shall I hide from Johan? What I am about to do. Do you understand? A child of God. He's not hiding things. What he's going to. He's, he's about to do. He's never hiding. He's always telling you ahead. This is why we're not fear to uncertain. Uh, we are not slave to fear because he's telling us 24-7. Let's open John chapter 16, 13. John chapter 16, 13. A child of God, this is our privilege. And let's read. Uh, are we on the same page? All right. Let's read in one voice. When the spirit of the truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are come. That are to come. So can we put our name on here? Instead of you, can you put your name? Let's read one more time. When the spirit of the, of the truth comes, he will guide Johan into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to Johan the things that are to come. He knows what he is going to do. He will not hide it from you. Again, Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, 17 to 18. 
Acts chapter 2, 17 to 18. Instead of beating yourself with your own thoughts or judging yourself, let's listen what God is about to do. So let's read Acts chapter 2, 17, 18 all together. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my, my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. This is the blessing we're given. Does it connect, does this content connect to you with what I share in the beginning? How the word we listen to guide our lives. It's been a long time. Our future is dark that we don't know what's going to happen. But now our lives will be, I know what it will be, so we know where we're going. We've been guided even without knowing where we're going. But now we align with God. We know where he's leading us to. This is a blessing of a child of God, the new creation. This means Esther 4.16, Esther said, If I perish, I will perish because I know I will not perish. She knows who takes care of her. Daniel chapter 3, verse 18, the Daniel three friends confessed, but if God does not deliver us, we do not, down, we do not bow down before the golden image because we know he takes care of us. So if we are the children of God, the new creation, when we know what God will about to do throughout this week, you know what you don't need is this. You don't need hidden motivation. You don't need hidden motivation. Second, you don't need to make second thought. You don't need to leave depending on your second thought or don't come up with second plan. Because you will not perish. Because God will deliver. Because Jesus is the Christ. That's our faith as a new creation. We're not living in uncertainty. We're living in the word of God. So this is our conclusion for today. First, God fulfills his word. He does that. He is doing it. He will do it. He is trustworthy and steadfast to his promise. He fulfills his word. Second, God answers prayer. He does answer our prayer in his ways. Sometimes might be not the way you expect it, but he is answering prayers. Amen. Can we confess amen? God fulfills his word. Amen. He answers prayers. Amen. When we know this, this is what's happening. Evangelism takes place. Not we try to do, it takes place. He opens up my heart. He opens up my mouth. He opens up our meeting. You, I see, I, I was having a meeting with Jagon. We were sitting in, a, uh, sitting in a student, it's called a student center, and there are like a bunch of kids, bunch of kids, like 100. And then we were sitting having a Tarapang Bible study, and Jagan gazed his eyes up, and right across us, we saw this girl reading Korean math, math textbook. 
are you surprised or not? Are you like, what does that mean? She was reading a Korean math textbook. Why are we surprised? Because Jagan is a teacher, TA, for a math class. And Jagan is Korean. And what's the percentage out of all these kids? She sat right in front of us. Oh, take, take out a Korean math textbook called Swage Jongseok. And then Jagan was like, So we came to her. We came to her and we asked her, what math class are you taking? She's taking math 180. You know what math 180 is? That's a course Jagan is teaching. How many students do we have in UIC? I know, she, he said there's like 1,200 kids taking math 180. But one of them was sitting right in front of us, reading Korean textbook. We approached, and she said, I have an exam tomorrow, next week, and I might die. Wow. How are we bumping into a person who wants to die next week? So, Jagon was, she didn't ask. Jagon was like, huh, I'm a TA for Math 180. She didn't ask. He was like, he revealed himself who he is. I'm a TA for Math 180. I can help you. And she's like, thank you so much. So he, he invited her to her, his office. So they met last Friday. And then next week, he's going to share the gospel. He got three girls' number. Wednesday. Man, can you do that? Evangelism <laughs> takes place. Amen. Such a, in such a perfect timing, in such a perfect moment, you will talk to someone who's in the need of Christ, who's prepared to the eternal life. And we are, by God's blessing and grace, we are used to make disciples of all nations. That's our blessing. And lastly, you guys may all realize these three takes place in one place. Worship. So worship is the blessing. Amen. Can we meditate on the message every day? Can we hold on to the message every day? Can we experience what God is about to do in our lives? If this has been the word speaking to you because God cares about you, can you now care about what he has been told you, he has been telling you just simply throughout today? Can we enjoy this privilege we're given? Let's have a time of prayer. And we will praise. Let's all sing. Promise before all time was his covenant to fully and perfectly. All
all fulfilled by my God. Only His perfect name, only by Jesus Christ, I've been free from chains, receive His true love. Though I stand here and face every day we are by the promised covenant, God will show me the way. All will be done according to His word, as He promised. Do not be dismayed, for the Lord will do just as He says. Surely the promised covenant of God will all be fulfilled just as is. So I'll go in faith and worship the King. Let's confess with our faith. Promise before our time was covenant to me. Fully and perfectly all fulfilled by my God. Only His perfect name, only by Jesus Christ, I've been free from chains, receive His life. Though I stand here, though I stand here and face every day we are living by the promised covenant. I will show me the way All will be done according to His word As He promised Do not be dismayed For the Lord will do Just as He says Surely the promised covenant of God Will all be fulfilled just as is So I'll go in faith and worship the King all will be done All will be done according to His word As He promised Do not be dismayed For the Lord will do Just as He says Surely the promised covenant of God Will all be fulfilled Just as it is So I go in faith and worship the King Lord Lord, through your word, and call and lead all my life. Through the church that you have raised, may you speak to us, Lord. Lord, through your word, and call and lead all my life. Through the church that you have raised, may you speak to us, Lord.
Father God, it is our privilege that we are called as your precious children of God. Isn't it the privilege of us that you have given us the authority that we are able to pray in your name to receive the answer that you are guiding us with the word of God that will be fulfilled in our lives, that you will make the evangelism taking place in our lives. Father, we were simply a damage to this earth, damage to others. We were simply a sinner, but you have called us righteousness, that you are calling us as a precious children of God. Then not only that, you have raised us as a main figure to save this age. Father, we confess, we believe that you are fulfilling your word of God. That we confess, that we believe that you are answering our prayers. That we believe you are making your evangelism taking place in our lives. That we believe this worship is a blessing. Father, there is nothing else that we need but only Christ. That may you change our imprint. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of our Father God, working of the Holy Spirit, be upon all the remnants who will be the main figure to experience the word of God is fulfilling. Who will be the main figure to experience that God is answering our prayer. Who, is, who will be the main figure to experience that the evangelism taking place who will be the main figure to confess the worship is a blessing. Be upon them now and forever. 